we are on uh, page, we're going to start on page 373. We're going to do two sections in algebra 2. Uh, we're going to look at graphing exponential functions, but we're only going to look at them. We're not going to graph, so that ought to make a lot of you happy. But we're going to talk about some things that we use exponentials, uh, functions for. Uh, and, and then we'll go to this next section, which is section um, 6.2, where you'll actually have an assignment. Hopefully that all happens today. I'm not sure that it will, but we'll see how it is. Okay, what we're looking at, if you look on page 373, is we're looking at a function that looks like this. Okay, um, this is called an ex exponential function because the uh, variable is in the exponent. Exponential function. Okay, we could replace b with one, but I'm going to replace b, the base, with two. And I'm going to replace f of x with y so we can graph it. And I, I know I said that you guys weren't going to graph it, but I want to graph it to show you what it looks like because all the rest of them kind of look similar. Alright, so I'm just going to use a t table table, and I'm going to start with a negative 3, just to give you an idea of what happens. If I do a negative 3, then I go y equals 2 to the minus 3 power. Now, I don't know if you remember this or not, and I hope that you will, that to the minus 3 power means that it's not happy. Remember, we move it to the place that it is happy. So this is actually y equals 1 over 2 to the third power, correct, which is 1 eighth. So one point is a negative 3, 1, 8. Do you see that? Right. So then we move to a negative 2, so we have y equals negative, or excuse me, 2 to the negative 2. Notice that the 2 stays at the base. Once again, he's not happy, so we move it to the denominator, and we get 1, 4. So we now have a point, negative 2, 1, 4. Then we move to a negative 1. We go y equals 2 to the minus 1 power, which is 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 half. So we have a negative 1, 1 half. Then I go to 0. And y equals 2 to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is? 1. 1. one. Correct? So I have point zero, 0.01. And then I move to 1 y equals, you can see I'm starting to cramp up a little bit because I want to get these in before I run into the tray. 2 to the first power, which is 2. two. 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 So I have the point 1, 2. And then I have 2, y equals 2 to the second power, which is 4. Now I'm just going to graph these points for you, and you can maybe see a pattern. Uh, a negative 3, 1, 8, so it would be right about there. Uh, a negative 2, 1, 4 would be about right there. A negative 2, 1 half, so you're about right there. 0, 1, about 1, 2, and 2, 4, and it keeps going. So what we get is this, and it keeps going. And I can fill in these numbers. I could put 1 half in, and it would hit here. I could put 1, 1 half in, and it would hit here, and you, there would be numbers in between. Correct? Okay. Um, you'll see that it follows this line forever, the x-axis, right? But it never touches that. You know what we call a line that we get closer to with the graph, but we never touch it? Okay? It's one of those words that you never want to say on video, but I'm going to say it. It's an asymptote. Okay? It's A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. All right? An asymptote. Okay? Yes, it is called that. It is a uh, boundary in which a graph gets closer to but does not intersect. So it's forever getting closer to but never touches it. Okay, it's called an asymptote. And in this case, we have an asymptote of the x-axis. Now, um, all exponential functions have an asymptote, uh, and 
most of them it's the x-axis. Okay, this is like a parent graph right? that you can see. It goes on forever both ways, doesn't it? Okay, if we talk domain and range, which we always do, uh, the the domain is all the x values, so it goes from a negative infinity to infinity. Do you understand that? Okay, the range then is a little bit different. It starts at zero, it's closer to zero, but it never touches it. Okay, so we have zero to infinity in this case. Now it's funny, um, the parent graph, two is not the parent graph. B is actually called more the parent graph, but this is probably the most uh, unique one, the basic one, not unique, the most basic one you can find. Notice that it goes to the point zero, one, okay? Unless it's moved, all exponential functions go to the point zero, 1, because any number to the 0 power is 1. We can still move it, but there will be a place where it goes through that. Okay? And this is what it looks like. Now, the reason it's called exponential is we use it exponentially. And one of the ways we use it is exponential growth and decay. Okay? Uh, one of the places that you use in science, and maybe you've learned this before, is like bacteria. Bacteria can grow exponentially, and it can decay exponentially. The body can decay, right? Okay, those are things that we talk about. Uh, if you turn to page 374, uh, on the top of the page, uh, they show you a new form in which they add a letter here, y equals a to the b, and they go x minus h plus k. Is that right? Okay, I'm just going to briefly go over this. I'm not going to have you graph any of these. I'm just going to briefly go over Okay, A affects it. All right, much like A would in a parabola. Remember, we go up faster. Okay, but um, H, K moves it. Well, I'll write it. I better not write it as an ordered pair because you'll think it is an ordered pair. H moves left or right, and k moves up, down. In other words, uh, a moves uh, horizontally and k moves vertically. So what's the a? Okay, a would be like the a in a parabola. It would, it would um, you know, a parabola when you go one over, uh, one up, and two over four. And when we change the A, it goes one over, two up, or one over, whatever up. So it'll double that. Now, um, I'll give you some idea. The best way to handle that in the cases that we're going to do is to just do a t-table and multiply by that A. Okay? I just wanted to show you this. Um, we're not going to we're not going to graph any, but we are going to look at exponential growth and growth factor which is on page 375. Um, at the top of the page, page 375, it says you can model exponential growth with a constant percent increase over a specific time period using the following function. Okay? A, T of time equals little a times one plus r to the T power. Now we'll go over what this is. It says the function can be used to find the amount after t time periods, where a is the initial amount and r is the percent of increase per time period. Know that the base of the exponential expression one plus r is called the growth factor, okay? This is called the growth factor. And this is a rate, okay? And here's your time period. It's your time. And look what it said about A. It says um, where A is the initial amount. A is the initial amount. So this is the initial amount. And that's a good way to think of it um, when, we, when we'll talk on, exponen on exponential functions. Okay, let's take an example. They want you to graph it. I just want you to look at the formula. It says the census. The first U.S. Census was conducted in 1790, a few years ago. 
At that time, the population was 3,929,214. Since then, the United States population has grown by an approximately 2.03% annually. Okay? So I want you to look at that. I just want to plug into here. So if we wanted to take the amount in time, okay, what would happen was the initial amount, which was A, was the 3 million, correct? Yep. All right. So it was the 3,929,214, okay? Now, we're going to take 1 plus, and the percent is 2.03, okay? All right. Before you ever use a percent, before you ever use a percent, you need to change it to a decimal. What is 2.03% as a decimal? 0 0.203. 0 0.0203. And what you do is you move the two places to the left because percent means per 100. So if we, sim whoa, if we simplify, do you have a question? No. Okay, but if we simplify this, it would be this. Oops, I forgot the T. Sorry. I forgot the T. Now, what does the T stand for? Time. Time. All right. Time. Now, we do not know the time here, do we? But we could use that function. If, if given the years, we could use that function. Okay? Now, the reason I brought this up is because you it's possible that you'll see one of these formulas. Okay? Now, you won't have to graph it. Uh, the best way you know how the book graphed it is they had you plug it in your graphing calculator. Okay. And you can plug it in your graphing calculator. It would do it for you. It's a very large number, but it would do it for you. Okay? Now, uh, the next down below the graph on page 375, it says the second type of exponential function is an exponential decay. This was called a what? This was called exponential growth, right? And this is based on percent. Now we're going to look at exponential decay. Look at the uh, uh, look at the uh, graph on page three seventy five. What do you notice? It goes to the left. It goes. Right. It goes to the left. So it is the, basically the same function. So it's f of x equals b to the x. However, uh, b is between 0 and 1. So what kind of number is b? What kind of number is between 0 and 1? It's a fraction. It's a fraction or a decimal between 0 and 1. Turn to page 376. y equals 1 third x. Look at that graph. Okay. Uh, exponential decay, the graph goes the other way. It goes like this. Still has the asymptote as the x-axis, but it goes the other way. Okay? So if I was to go to negative 3, I, let's just take 1 half. Instead of putting 2, 1 half to the negative third would actually be 8. So a negative 2 would be up here at 8. So let's start that in reverse order. Okay? All right? Um, then they show you on B what happens, and uh, when you look at that, so you don't have to graph them, but what happens when you throw in an A and an, X and an H and a K, and how we move it, and it's, it gets wider, okay? You got that? All right. Now, um, look at the bottom of page that. Is that you? Look at the bottom of the page, and we have a decay factor. Remember, we had a growth factor. Now we have a decay factor. What's the difference? You got rid of the R. Your minus R. Okay. So on the next page, on example, real word example five, it says a cup of green tea contains 35 milligrams of caffeine. The average tea can eliminate approximately 12.5% of the caffeine from their system per hour. Okay, well we start out with A, whoops, I forgot A. Nobody said a thing. I forgot A, but A is 35. It says the average T 
or the cup of green tea contains 35 milligrams, right? And then we subtract one minus, what's the percent? 0 0.125. That's how much we subtract over time. So that tells you how fast the team can get rid of caffeine, right? Yeah. In tea. Okay. And so if we take time, depending on what our time periods is, we can put that in. And when I say depending on what our time periods are, those can be those can change according to time. Okay. You understand that? Okay. These are all exponential functions. So is that an answer? Well, we that, that, yes. Now they want you to graph. It. They show the graph there. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to move to section 6.2. Remember, I, I didn't talk, I didn't have you graphing, okay? I'm not concerned about the graphs. What I am concerned about is solving because of the algebra. So we're on page 383. And once again, uh, we're going to talk about exponential functions. Yep. Would we have a time on that one? Because it says three hours. Good, okay. Let's go back. I think you're right. Let's go back. It says, I'm on back on page 377. Thank you. It says, estimate found time for caffeine in teenagers by three hours after drinking a cup of green tea. Let's go ahead and plug this in, just for calculator's sake. Uh, let's take 35. Um, pull out your graphing calculator. Let me show you how to do this. Now we're talking milligrams, right? Okay, so what we want to do is, uh, in our calculator, let's go 35 times 1 minus 0 0.125 caret 3, and hit return. 23.447. How much? 23.5. 23.5. Twenty-three point four five milligrams. See how that works? Questions about that? So thank you. I was going to actually, actually, Sophia had to do that. Had it down to do that example, and I completely forgot. Okay, kind of looked at the time. Okay, so let's now turn to page three eighty-three, and we're going to talk about exponential equations. We talked about the function. Now we're going to look at exponential equations. Okay. If b to the x power equals b to the y power, then x equals y. Okay. We have to. This is true. If two, if two um, powers with the same base. You know, if I went like this, if I said um, 3 to the 4th equals 3 to the 2y, okay? I could solve for y. How could I solve, solve for y? 2y has to equal 4 because they have the same base. Therefore, y would equal 2. Do you understand that? Why, if they have the same base, their exponents have to be equal. Okay? If they have exponents. That makes it, if they're equal. Right? Okay. If that is true, if this is true, but this would say then x must equal y. All right. So what is that? What is that? How does that help us? We can actually solve exponential equations if we know two are equal. We can solve for the exponents. Okay. This is what I mean. It will say this. Solve. Well, first of all, do they have the same base? No. No. So our goal is to get them to have the same base. All right, so this is 2 to the x. This one, I'm going to rewrite 8 as a power of 2. So it's, I believe it's 2 to the third power, right? But then that's to this third power, right? Let me show you again. 
8 is 2 to the third power, right? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Mm -hmm. All right? But then we, it's to that third power also. So since the power rule, whenever you take a power of power, what do we do with those two? Mm -hmm. Multiply them. If we were multiplying, we'd add them. Do you understand, Brian? Yeah. Okay. So now tell me what x equals. 9. There you go. Okay. Take a look at this. Let's get a little bit more complicated. 9 to the 2x minus 1 equals 3 to the 6x. Okay. They do not have the same base, do they? But they could have, right? Because 9 is the power of 3, is it not? Isn't 9 3 to the second power? And so that is to the 2x minus 1 power, correct? And that still equals 3 to the 6x. So now we have to multiply these two. Be careful here because this is 3 to the 2, and you have to take it times the quantity. Can you see that? So you've got to distribute through is what I'm saying. 3 to the 4x minus 2 equals 3 to the 6x. All right? Now, I'm going to run out of room here. But since I have the same base now, that means that 4x minus 2 equals 6x. And I can solve for x by subtracting 4x from both sides. Negative 2x equals 2x, or equals negative 2 equals 2x divided by 2. x equals negative 1. Lila, do you have any questions? Do you? Okay. All right, turn to page 384 then. Example 3. Kristen starts an experiment with 7,500 bacterial cells. After four hours, there are 23,000 cells. Write an exponential function that can be used to model the number of bacteria after x hours if the number of bacteria changes at the same rate. So what we're looking for, it says write a function, correct? Mm -hmm. So um, we want to write a function, um, y equals, we want to put it in this form, y equals a b to the x power. This is an exponential function. Now, you remember from the notes before that I erased, what did a equal? Initial the initial amount. A equals initial amount. And they told us what the initial amount was. How much did she start with? 7,500. She started at 7,500. Okay. Now, it also said that after four hours, there were 23,000 cells. Well, um, after four hours is time. That would be our X. All right. So 7,500 B to the 4 hours would equal 23,000, was it? Is that right? So what are we trying to find here now? B. We're trying to find B. Once we find B, then we can have a model for the rest of the problem, for the rest of the problems. Okay? It's here um, when we found the constant proportionality. Uh, y equals kx. You remember that? Well, it would be the same thing. You're finding a constant is basically what you're finding. We're finding B. So how do you do this? We're going to take um, and we're going to divide both sides by, whoops, 7,500, correct? Just, right? Mm -hmm. So we have B to the 4 equals 230 divided by 75. What is it? 3.067. Does it keep going on? 666? Six, six, six? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that equals B to the fourth, correct? Now, how do we find B? Square root. Square root. 
not the square root, but the fourth root. The fourth root. So we're going to take the fourth root, which looks like this, of b to the fourth, and we're going to take the fourth root of 3.067. Now what we have to do is figure out how to do that on our calculator, correct? All right, one way to do it is, there are several different ways, but I think probably the quickest and easiest is to put parentheses 3.067, parentheses caret 1 divided by 4 in parentheses. And that's the same as fourth root, right? And you should get 1.323 approximately. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Ireland, you didn't get that. Where's the slash? The carrot? You have to divide. You just division. Yeah, division. I'm sorry. Division. Okay. All right. Now, so this is B. So now our function becomes uh, Y equals A, which is 7,500. B, which is 1.323 to the x. Now we have an x and y. This is your equation. It's an exponential equation, isn't it? It's an exponential function. Does it look pretty? No. No. But not everything's pretty, right? So let's take a look at the next question. Question says, how many bacteria cells can be expected in a sample after 12 hours? Where does the 12 go? X. It's the x. All right, so we're going to take 7,500 times 1.323 carat 12 after 12 hours. They got 215,665, if you round it up. What was it? What did I say? 215,665. And what would that be? How do we label it? Bacteria cells. Bacteria cells. Do you think this is important? Yes. Why? Like What's going on in the real world right now where this could be important? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Okay. Now I'll tell you why. how much time do I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to give you a formula and we'll stop here and we'll pick up tomorrow. But here's a formula that I think is very important because I've been paying to this a long time. This is compound interest. Before the bell rings, what is compound interest? Is that NT? Um, this is NT, or this is the number of years and the rate. Okay? It's like extra money you pay because we're not all rich. <laughs> okay. Compound interest is money that you pay, and it just keeps repeating over and over so that it's done over itself. It's not done, in, it's done in a time period, but it's a more complicated than simple interest, and banks use it when you borrow money. So if you buy a house and you, and you um, borrow $450,000, you may end up paying, for example, we borrowed a little over $100,000. We're gonna end up paying three times that by the time we're done paying, okay? Because that's what you pay to get money to, get money to borrow. We'll go through this tomorrow. Um, let me give you your assignment. You can start on it. It is page 386, numbers 10 through 34 even. It's due Thursday. because I'm going to finish the lecture tomorrow. Wednesday is Accelerated Reader, and it's due Thursday. Okay? Can you shut me down, please? Thank you. We'll come back tomorrow for...